What's up guys, I gotta show you a really, really cool technique that a lot of you probably didn't even know was possible. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here on the screen. I am quite literally moving a cylinder that is booleaned onto another cylinder with absolutely zero shading problems. You can see no matter which way I'm rotating this, the shading is impeccable. Now, the way we do this is through two different techniques which I'm gonna show you in this video. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Before we get started, if you're brand new to hard surface modeling, definitely check out our hard surface accelerator program in the description below. We'll teach you everything about hard surface modeling in under two weeks, just like thousands of our students have done here. You'll learn modeling, design, presentation, how to develop a portfolio, quite literally everything. And again, I'll link that in the description below. So the first thing we need to do, well, actually what I wanna first do is show you how uh, a normal approach would be, okay? So I'm gonna go here to vertices, we're gonna go to 16, gonna rotate this, all right? And what I wanna do here is just make a um, circle here in the top. So the approach I'm about to show you is completely valid, but there's problems with it and I'll show you why. So obviously anybody could use some basic subdivision surface and go in here, right? Make some proximity loops here. We'll just bevel that. And then all I would have to do really is just run a sub D and just to speed things up, I'll put a crease over there and we'll shade that smooth. And you can see I have, um, you know, this cylinder here on the top and the shading's clean, right? The issue is if I wanted to like move the cylinder around it's pretty difficult. What I would have to do is like take this whole selection. I'd have to like shift Z it to move it. And then if I do that, it's gonna hurt the curvature and cause disruptions in the shading. It's just not really, it's not really something we can, you know, change. Even if I were to go to like the 3D cursor trying to rotate this, like you can't do it. You just can't do it really. So other people might come in and they might say, okay, well, let's use a Boolean. So we'll go in here and let's just do like a normal Boolean, okay? And again, all of these approaches are accurate, but there's limitations to each one, which is what I'm showing you here. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this. I'm gonna move this in. I'm gonna run a union Boolean. And number one, even if I like add some loops in here, we're still gonna get some pretty nasty shading, right? I can mitigate that by adding in loops. Um, there's still gonna be limitations there, not to mention if I wanna add a bevel, well, I'd have to use like a bevel modifier and then I have to slide things out of the way or another option in here would be to use like mesh machines offset cut, which I could do, you know, no problem, add in a bevel there but you're still gonna have some pretty nasty shading problems. And again, we get back to the initial issue where like, I can't rotate this around. Like it's just, I can't do it. So I'm kind of stuck. Like if I wanted to use a non-destructive approach, sure, I could move the Boolean itself, right? I could just move this around the 3D cursor, but it doesn't really matter because the shading is gonna be messy and I can't get like a physical bevel around here if I'm using this approach, I'm just stuck. So what we can do instead is something a lot of you probably didn't even know existed. Let's start from scratch and add in another cylinder here. I'm gonna just do 64 vertices. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this, okay? And then what I wanna do is I want to duplicate this and we're just basically taking the same approach as last time, all right? But instead of actually running a Boolean on here, we're not gonna use a Boolean at all. In fact, these are gonna be two completely separate objects, okay? So what we first need to do is move this cylinder away from this one. It can't be overlapped at all, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna delete out this back face. And actually what we could do is, let's first extrude this in a little bit. I'm gonna move this edge back a bit as well. Okay, don't worry about the edge markings, doesn't really matter. And then I'm just gonna scale this up. 
And then what I want to do is I basically want to, I could come to this one, move this in. And then I basically just want to add in like something along those lines, okay? Just something like this. And then what I want to do is delete out this back face and maybe just scale this down a bit. What we're going to do here is we're going to shrink wrap this object onto this object. There are a few problems with this and I'll show you how to overcome them. First of all, if I go in here to deform, I always forget where they, this is like a new menu, but we go in here to shrink wrap. All we need to do, the base, think of a shrink wrap is like, how would I explain it? You know, like people on the International Space Station, they use those, you know, compressed foods. There's like, they're suctioned to the food, basically. There's like no air pockets. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's basically, that's what a shrink wrap's doing. It's like suctioning the object onto another one. There's like basically no, nothing in between. Anyways, if you just hear the name shrink wrap, it sounds pretty intuitive. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click here, we're gonna pick this one, and all that does is it just takes the entire object and just paste it like as this thing onto this one. So now it's just all compressed onto the object. That's not what I want. What I want to do is I want to make sure we're only shrink wrapping these, um, let me just remove this for now. I only want to shrink wrap these areas and you'll see what I mean and you'll see why in a second. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna alt click on you know these vertices here. We're gonna go into vertex groups. We're gonna click on the plus button and we're gonna click on assign, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the shrink wrap. We're gonna choose this as the target and this time we're just gonna choose that vertex group. And that's basically just telling Blender, I only want you to project these vertices here that we added here in this vertex group onto the object here. This causes problems as you can see. It's like basically extruding this here onto the object, you see? can move it back or forth, whatever. If it's closer, it looks a bit better, but not perfect. What we need to do is we need to slowly transition these areas as a shrink wrap onto this cylinder as well. We need a slow transition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here, I'm gonna alt click this set of vertices, and we're gonna also assign this. However, we don't want to assign this on a value of one because then it's just gonna cause even more issues. Again, we wanna have a very clean, transition from a full shrink wrap to a partial shrink wrap as we work our way back to no shrink wrap at all. So what I'm gonna do instead here is I'm gonna put the weight to maybe like 0.8, then we're gonna click on assign, that's already looking better. And then over here, we're gonna do maybe 0.6, gonna click on assign, it's already looking better. And then over here, we're gonna do maybe 0.4, you could even go lower if you wanted to, we'll try 0.4, I'm gonna click on assign. And it still looks a bit strange because this set of vertices is very far away from the cylinder, but watch what happens if I push this in, it shrink wraps a lot better because it's closer to the object. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? Now the only thing you wanna be careful of is making sure that this here, which is not assigned to the vertex group, you wanna make sure that's not actually entering this area at all. So this is probably about, you know, as far as I'd really want to push it. I think that's a good, you know, distance there. Cool. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and go into material view. I want to see how this looks. We're going to go ahead and just um, add in a material. We'll make this a bit darker. We'll give this one the same material. And then I'm just going to make this a little bit rougher. Okay. Now, it's a little bit better. Now watch what I can do. I can actually press the period key and then rotate this around the 3D cursor. However, we still have problems because if I zoom in here, we have this very, very obvious, like it's not transitioning into the cylinder nicely. There's a very hard edge right there. So this is a very easy fix, okay? What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add another vertex group and you'll see why in a second. So I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna add a new vertex group. We can call this shading fix. It does not matter what you name these, you can name these whatever you want. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go in here and we first need to, just to make life easier, 
I'm going to move these back. And we need to take the first set of vertices that make the first point of contact with the cylinder. And we're going to assign that to the shading fix group. The reason is because these vertices, which make the first point of contact, are where it's kind of causing these you know, visual lines right here. And we need to transfer the shading from here to here. And these vertices are the first point of contact. So we're going to go in. Under shading fix, we're going to click on assign. All right. Now we're just going to add a data transfer. We're going to pick this cylinder. We're going to choose the shading fix for the vertex group, face corner data, custom normals, projected face interpolated. Now if we go in here, it didn't do too much. It's actually a little bit better. You can see. The reason it's not perfect is simply because if we go in here, the weight needs to be set to 1. Otherwise, it's only 40% effective. I want this to be 100% effective. And I'm going to turn off the overlays. Watch what happens when I assign that to the full weight of 1. We have to go back into object mode. Boom. Now it's completely, it's completely transferred the shading from this cylinder to this one. And I can turn this off and on. And it looks absolutely impeccable. Now what if I move this cylinder in even more? The shading is going to start breaking again. And that's because these areas here, these portions are now entering this vicinity, but they're not actually assigned to the shading fix area, our vertex group. So if I assign those as well, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on assign. Let's go into object mode. Look at that. So basically, at any point, you know, if this um, if these start interfering with the cylinder, you'd have to assign those. However, if you pull this back, it's just going to look weird. In which case, you probably want to just remove those straight up from the uh, from the vertex group. So, I'm just going to stick with these, you know, front ones doing the shading transfer, and you're going to see we have a very very clean result. This down here is just a shadow, by the way, and it looks amazing. So now quite literally what I could do is I could rotate this like around the 3D cursor. And look at this. Completely impeccable shading. This literally looks like a union boolean or a sub D, yet these are two physically separate objects. This is an incredibly powerful technique that it can just be a game changer. I mean, look at how insane this is. You wouldn't even know this was a Boolean. You'd think this is actually like one single object. It's just crazy. And you can do this in literally any situation on any type of model. It's really that simple. So that's it for the video. I mean, there's not much more to show in this tutorial. I, um, I've been using this a lot recently, and I don't think I actually have a video on it. But super, super powerful stuff. And again, here's how it looks without that data transfer and without that shrink wrap. So we're first shrink wrapping and then we're just transferring the shading information. And it is really that simple. So hope you enjoyed that little trick. Hope you use it in your own workflow. And if you want to learn our entire workflow for hard surface modeling in under 14 days, we'll teach you the full modeling process, how to use the tools, rendering, quite literally everything, then check out our hard surface accelerator program in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.